On the Choose to Think podcast, I will encourage and empower you to engage and optimize your best thought life in practical, meaningful ways so that you can live day by day in joy, peace, and God's purpose despite all externals. This is Victoria, and welcome back to the Choose to Think podcast. I'm so glad you're here. Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Choose to Think podcast. Listen to this. I wonder if you recognize this song from 1972, and the lyrics go like this. I can wash out 44 pairs of socks and have them hanging out on the line. I can starch and iron two dozen shirts, for you can count from one to nine. I can scoop up a great big dipper full of lard from the drippings can, throw it in the skillet, go out and do my shopping, be back before it melts in the pan. Because I'm a woman, W-O-M-A-N, I'll say it again. I can rub and scrub till this old house is shining like a dime, feed the baby, grease the car, and powder my face at the same time. Get all dressed up, go out and swing till 4 a.m. and then lay down at 5, jump up at 6, and start all over again because I'm a woman. W-O-M-A-N, I'll say it again. If you come to me sickly, you know I'm going to make you well. If you come to me all hexed up, you know I'm going to break the spell. If you come to me hungry, you know I'm going to fill you full of grits. If it's love and you're liking, I'll kiss you and give you the shivering fits because I'm a woman. W-O-M-A-N, I'll say it again. I got a $20 gold piece, says there ain't nothing I can't do. I can make a dress out of a feed bag and I can make a man out of you because I'm a woman. A W-O-M-A-N. I'll say it again because I'm a woman. W-O-M-A-N and that's all. (laughs) Oh my heavens. Can you believe that? Later, there was an Anjoli commercial that I can also remember that said, I can bring home the bacon, no, 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 fry it up in a pan. Do you remember that? <laughs> For the record, though, I am a W-O-M-A-N. I can do absolutely N-O-T-H-I-N-G. That's nothing without God, without his strength, his comfort, and his spirit. Can I get an amen? Sometimes your life may feel like a circus. You're running here and there and countless people depend on you and need you to help them in their own circus. Are you running on empty? I always think about you and I wonder, are you feeling a bit out of sorts or you're overwhelmed, tired these days? I wonder what difficulties you're facing. Well, do you want to hang up your W-O-M-A-N card? Yeah, I do. I'm hanging up my woman card, according to the world standards. The world tells us you can do it, you can do it, keep going, hustle, bust it, get it. That's what the world tells us, but that's not exactly what God tells us. And let me be the first to say that though you are a woman, you're not a super woman. Why not try these labels on for size? And why not focus on these identifiers instead? You are a daughter to the king. You are a divine priesthood. You are a child of God. Okay, these types of declarations breathe life and strength into your oft-weary bones and mind, don't they? You can wear the yoke of so-called womanhood, according to the world standards, or you can wear the yoke of Christ. And apparently... His is easy and light, but how? Well, let me give you a challenge. Try starting with your, just try starting your day with trusting God and believe it or not, you're going to end your day with joy. Start your day by trusting God and end your day with joy. So grab a piece of paper and write down who God is to you, because that's where we're going to shift our mind. We're not going to focus on I am, I am in the sense of what someone else defines us as or worldly standards that we're trying fruitlessly to achieve. And instead, we're going to say, who is God to us and who does God say we are? What are those traits and qualities that you really need to see God demonstrate to you today? And okay, just as a little check here, why is this so important? Because when we fix our thoughts on Jesus, on God, on the spirit, and that identity the Godhead identity, and who God says we are, we find freedom and strength every single day. Believe me, I practice this in my life. Sometimes my life feels like that whirlwind, and it's like my head is spinning, and I'm like, oh dear, how am I going to get all these things done? And it, it feels like a lot of pressure. But when I stop that, that roller coaster ride, and I just jump off and say, okay, 
hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm going to pause a little bit and I'm going to take a deep breath and I'm going to remember these truths. Then suddenly I'm infused with God's power, his presence and his strength. Even when the doorbell's ringing, the baby's crying, the phone is buzzing and it's crunch time at work. Well, check out what David wrote in Psalm 71 and he declares that God is my hope, my rock of refuge, my fortress, my confidence, my strong refuge, my God. Scholars suggest that he penned this psalm in his old age, perhaps even during his son Absalom's rebellion against him. He reminded himself that though he felt weak, he could find rest within the strong tower that God provided. Now, think about that. You may feel weak, but you can rush and rest into and inside a fortress that is God, his name, his power, his strength. And though you are weak, He is strong and you kind of tap into his strength that way. In other words, nestled in God's presence and provision of refuge, David let down his guard and could be that weak man that he was all knowing he was fully protected by God against any measure of external threats. And you too may feel weak, but you can find rest inside the spiritual sanctuary that God provides. And check this out. When you slow down just a second in your busy whirlwind life, you can begin to declare with your mouth God's righteousness. You can praise him, thank him for the many blessings you have. And oh boy, you're right. You've got it. Joy will come. Your strength will rise. You no longer focus on your strength in the sense of what you can do on your own or any obligations or pressures that you feel from others. But instead, that strength that you focus on, if you're focusing on your strength, that will wane like the evening tide. No, sir. You're going to focus on God's strength in you and through you. Do you see the difference? I know this sounds a bit lofty or even maybe unachievable to you, but with proper thinking and a shift in your perspective, you can find peace and comfort. I promise you can find strength as you wait upon the Lord to work on your behalf. Here's what one commentator, name is Barnes, says about all this. And and I personalized it a bit to direct it to you. And, And he says, you will go in the strength of the Lord God in your future journey through life, in your trials, in your duties, in your conflicts, in your temptations, admonished in the past of your own weakness and remembering how often God is interposed, or in other words, how, how he's acted, you can hereafter lean only on his arm and not trust in your own strength. But leaning on his his arm, you will go confidently to meet the duties and the trials of life. If you have the strength of God to lean on, or you can use that strength as if it were your own, there's no duty that you may not, that he won't discharge to you, no trial that you can't bear. The Hebrew here in this particular verse of our psalm is, I will come with the mighty deeds, more literally strengths of the Lord God. I will come with God's strength. That's what that means. It's used to denote the mighty acts of Yahweh who's proven himself, right? Think back on your life and your journey of faith and how many times God has intervened on your behalf and made a way where you thought there was no way. Those times he has strengthened you. And it could have been by an encouraging word of a friend or a phone call or a note you received or a song you heard on the radio. He's with you. He wants to help you. He wants you to look to him, to rely on him for the strength that you need to get through this 21st century living. It's tough. It's hard, but you are not alone. God is with you. And then this commentator Barnes also goes on to explain how God will be your comfort because sometimes when you're overwhelmed, feeling weak at wit's end, not knowing which way to turn and you have so many tasks to do, you just need a little bit of comfort and God will comfort you on every side. Literally, it says you turn yourself and and he will comfort you. He's going to, he's going to be there with you where you, where he's going to be directing your path and he will turn to comfort you. It also means to surround or to encompass. And it means like that God's going to go around you. He's going to encircle you and comfort you. And it's expressed like this. It was that confident assurance of entire or complete consolation. So you can lay down your W-O-M-A-N card. Yeah, I'm having fun saying that. But stop trying to do everything. 
Give yourself a break. Find rest in God and in the power of his name. Rush into his sanctuary. Ask him to tell you what to do next. Give him, offer before him your to-do list or your task list and say, Lord, my day is yours. Lead me and guide me in the direction that you would have me go. If I'm about to turn left, when you say, no, stay on the right path, then correct me. Give him permission to meddle in your to-do list, your get-to-do list, and ask him for guidance on those things that you need to do. And there will be divine interruptions. I can promise you that. But don't let the enemy get under your skin. Don't let him thwart what God has designed for you. Don't let him rob and steal your joy. It does not have to be that way. You know, my family, we recently went on a, a vacation and it was to a, a cab and my parents so generously provided for us this humongous cabin out in the mountains in of Kentucky and and just the beautiful beautiful place with rivers and gorges and and uh, valleys and trees and just a beautiful time of year and from even before that we've had so many things we had uh, a covid we experienced we had uh, a trip to the universe to the I'm sorry university yeah I've got my teaching schedule on my mind a trip to the ER uh, during our, our vacation, we had another part of our family. Uh, not everybody was able to go, but we had, I think, what did we have? 17 out of 19 or 15? I don't know how many we are now, but we had a couple who couldn't come because of another medical issue and an illness. And we had just so many things. We had dogs. You ever taken dogs on a vacation? Yeah. Note to self, leave the dogs at home or in a kennel or with someone watching them. So there is that thing. We had um, just the, a cabin that we had to deal with, and maybe things weren't exactly the best, or you know, maybe it was an out of date cabin kind of thing. And and oh, just one thing after another after another. And I think the enemy was all over that, but we were determined to see the laughter and the love and the unity and the joy and the freedom and the forgiveness and the companionship that we had. It was a one though it was a very difficult vacation, and though we were most likely all exhausted uh, after we came back, we know that the enemy didn't have the upper hand there because we refused to give that to him. And, and we were not, we were able to stay strong in the Lord. Even our sleeping arrangements were really, really, really odd. I won't even tell you about that, but they were kind of odd in this place. So all of that to say, I know you're busy. I know you have a lot going on. I know that you may feel weary. And I want you to listen to this Psalm and just allow these words that the Psalmist wrote, that David wrote to encourage his own heart. Psalm 71, the NIV version. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, rescue me and deliver me. Turn your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge to which I can always go. Give the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of those who are evil and cruel. For you have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. From birth I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. I have become a sign to many. You are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendor all day long. Do not cast me away when I'm old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone. For my enemies speak against me. Those who wait to kill me conspire together. They say, God has forsaken him. Pursue him and seize him, for no one will rescue him. Do not be far from me, my God. Come quickly, God, to help me. May my accusers perish in shame. May those who want to harm me be covered with scorn and disgrace. As for me, I will always have hope. I will praise you more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous deeds, of your saving acts all day long, though I know not how to relate them all. I will come and proclaim your mighty acts, sovereign Lord. I will proclaim your righteous deeds, yours alone. Since my youth, God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. Your righteousness, God, reaches to the heavens. You who have done great things, who is like you, God? 
Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. You will increase my honor and comfort me once more. I will praise you with the harp for your faithfulness, my God. I will sing praise to you with the lyre, holy one of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you, I whom you have delivered. My tongue will tell of your righteous acts all day long. For those who wanted to harm me have been put to shame and confusion. And this is the word of the Lord. I love what this commentator, and his name is Gills, wrote about the comfort that we receive as we depend on the Lord. He reiterated that God would comfort you on every side by his spirit, his word, ordinances, by his truths and promises, with his rod and staff, and with mercy, grace, and loving kindness. This phrase denotes the abundance of comfort, which should come, as it were, from every quarter and encompass him all about. For the redemption of the soul is exceeding precious, being the contrivance of infinite wisdom, the fruit of divine grace, and owing to the blood and sacrifice of Christ. And let's not forget this major detail as we close. We find comfort, we find strength, we find hope, confidence, protection, peace, and freedom by means of the atoning and sacrificial work of Jesus Christ. He is the way maker. He paved the way for us to have lasting joy despite all externals, despite all of them. We get to choose. And I challenge you, choose to think, choose what to focus on, choose your mindsets, choose your emotions and feelings. Don't let them drive you. There is a better way. God, we have the mind of Christ. God gave us the mind of Christ. Let's exercise that for a reason. So do what you can each day, but remember to come under the yoke ship, that easy and light yoke ship, yoke ship of Christ. And there you'll find rest for your weary soul. There, there you'll find strength that you need to get through your day today. God bless you. And now let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your word. I thank you that you are with us 24 seven. Father, I ask for your deliverance, for your safety, for your protection and your provision. And Father, I ask that you give every listener hope, that cord of hope dangling before them. All they have to do is yank on it. Father, help us to cry out to you in our distress and our busy schedules, our busy lives, and to know that you are with us and that it is your yoke we want to wear. We don't want to come under the yoke of the world and, and all that the world tells us about being a woman and and just this great task mas- master and doing a gazillion things every day. And we're just one person. But Lord, help us to remember who we are. We are your children. We are daughters of the King. We are divine and royal priesthood. And Father, we are made in your image. So help us today, Lord, to do life as you would have us do it. Help us to think thoughts that glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. It's a wrap, Brain Changer. And until next time, Dios primero y que Dios te bendiga. Ciao.